on the face of it, the recipe for the perfect shooting trip is fairly simple. And yet with near infinite variables, perfection can be hard to achieve. In my mind, there's two major facets. The situation and the occasion. Situation includes beautiful locations, favorable weather. If he doesn't have a good day here tomorrow, then there's something wrong with him because this place is magical. Testing quarry and consuming hunting. This really is an all-consuming thing. You're constantly on the lookout for game. You're constantly making sure your feet are in a stable position so you don't fall over. Scotland is a stunning place. These are obviously important, but are nothing without the occasion. <laughs> a very day childish day, mate. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. This includes atmosphere. What are you? An idiot sandwich. <laughs> Fine guns. I mean, how can you not like that? Just to look at. Food and drink, fraternity and community. Everybody will have their own preferred recipe with these ingredients. And this one is mine. I'm just a nature addict. I think we'd all agree it's good for the soul. Better for the soul when you're carrying a gun. Am I right? Welcome to finesse. And a nearly perfect shooting trip. I've been invited by my friend Tom from William Powell for two nights in Scotland, including one duck flight and a half walked up, half mini driven day. Welcome. This has been a real exciting trip getting up here. Every time we come to Scotland, it gets exciting, right? I, I'm, every time I come up here, I'm shooting, and it is shooting paradise. My first impressions of this estate is, it's beautiful. Tomorrow, we're gonna burn some calories. The ground is not forgiving. It's beautiful, rough, and wild. But tonight, we're after some ducks. Tom's brought up a whole selection of William Powell guns. Tomorrow we're going to be shooting small gauges and I am really excited for that. But tonight it's duck, so it's 12 bores, big steel, and I've got the Princeps, which I shot on a game day last year and I'm a big fan of. We've probably got 15, 20 minutes before it's dark enough for the ducks to start moving. So they'll come in that way and turn on the wind up the other end. We've got Andrew behind us and as long as he lets a few get through, we should have a good evening. We're up in the Cairngorms National Park, an estate called Finesse. It's probably one of the most beautiful estates that I've ever been to, if not the most beautiful estate. I think Johnny's going to enjoy himself. If he doesn't have a good day here tomorrow, then there's something wrong with him because this place is magical. I think hardship is quite important when it comes to hunting occasionally. And you don't have to do it every time. Sometimes it's okay for it to be slightly easier. It shows passion and dedication. And that's not like the main reason, obviously, but it is a very important part of it, surely. I think at this point, it's time now to turn around because it's that kind of light where the ducks are actually going to start coming. The view that way is very nice, though. I appreciate it. Oh, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Oh, fucking hell, rolling around. Oh, no, they right there. Oh, well, the first one wasn't. I fell over. Tom? Hey, skills to pay the bills, Tom Peachy. Suddenly I feel about 500 degrees. It's amazing what a bit of action can do for you. Hey, Leon, my man. It's funny, I was saying any minute now and they all came in. That's why it's so exciting, shooting any kind of wild game. Silly shot, there's a whole group behind him. I should have let him in through, really. Selfish, technically speaking. I was a bit locked in until I pulled the trigger and I saw them all come out of the... I'm so looking forward to tomorrow. It's going to be an amazing day. Tonight's a little treat. I'm going to have some nice dinner, a bottle of wine. Nice early night. I'm ready for 16,000 steps tomorrow. <gasps> I can't believe I just missed the stupidest bird of all. I was like, let's get this one in the bank. It's about getting ducks for dinner. <laughs> We've discussed how different guns are more suitable for different things. Most of the time, I like to see a lot of rib, but for ducks in the low light, turns out I really missed a gun that shoots where it points. There was moments of greatness, right? Leave me alone. Like one moment of greatness. Moments would be plural. <laughs> 
back down south where it's flat. It's quite a lot easier to see them coming in. From here, they kind of come straight off the mountain and before you know it, they're on top of you. Can't believe I missed that duck there. <laughs> We've had some very silly things on TGS. So that's probably the number one stupid miss of the year. I'm pretty sure I've not missed this many birds in a row for a long while. I shot this gun so well in the daylight. <laughs> Luckily, the rest of the team were on the ball. Hey, I'm glad the boys have got it down. We'll be bloody hungry otherwise. Almost done that, it's getting a little dark. The clouds have rolled over the sky over the back there, so I think those guys over there can see what's going behind us, but trying to see what's up there is... Um, optimistic, maybe. It was a great evening, I'm ready for dinner. And we walked off the lake with 19 ducks. Yeah, we'll go pick up a few ducks, go help the guys, and then uh, get back in the warm and civilization. I've got running nose. I'm southern. I, I mean, I shot nowhere at anything. <laughs> Every time you shoot with a new team, there's an ice breaking period. In this case, we were all like family after a few hours and were playing ridiculous games around the dinner table. for an early night, ready for the adventure to come. The plan was to line out and walk the bottom of this bank of silver birch down past the lock, before turning round and taking the top of the bank back towards the lodge. The quality of this terrain and cover had us all excited. And now you're done watching the most embarrassing misses compilation of TGS history ever, it's time to go shoot a walked up day in Scotland. This place is, is so beautiful. It's so peaceful just to be here. I'm excited, had a great night last night with the team. We're gonna have another great night tonight, but in the middle, let's go hunting. Guys, today I'm starting with a 28 gauge. William Powell Phoenix, it's a round body gun made in Italy to William Powell specs. This one's got a 15 and a half inch stock, which I'm quite excited about. 30 inch, 28 gauge barrels. I mean, 28 gauge is something I'm still exploring, but I was recommended these by the guys at Hull, 16 gram sixes. Naturally, I'd want to go for a heavier load, but they say the speed on these and the pattern on them actually will do a better job. I'm going to find out. 16 grams, you know, I like 18 grams in a 410. 16 grams? Only one way to find out. Plan to start. We're taking this bank all the way down here. Four guns to my left, Andrew to my right. It's a bank that sort of plateaus and steps down. Theoretically, birds fly downhill, but as we found the other week, no, they don't. No shots fired so far, but this cover is good. I opted not to wear a jacket and currently I'm really glad about that because I'm chronically unfit. Nice blood pumping, nice and warm. Even the gloves might have to come off. There's been a few birds sort of getting up a bit of a distance away. Got a guy with a spaniel to my right. I feel lucky for the next few minutes. First flush, we got a few guns down, no one fired a shot at it. As it always takes that first one to wake everybody up and remember why we're here. I'm not sure if you know, but the woodcock is my favorite bird to hunt. Oh, that wouldn't have been a more perfect woodcock situation if you tried, but they're not on the menu today. And that's like a painting when it came out and banked around, showed me its thing, the light ambient it's soft, so it's completely exposed against a dark background. I'm gonna dream about that woodcock. Let's go. I say hunt, not shoot, because even on a day like this where they're not on the menu, witnessing a woodcock flush and continue its darting flight through the trees brought me the same joy as if I'd been in get dinner on the table mode. Well, I got excited for a second. Hear yeah, the feather, cock pheasant Derek up, but I think he curled downhill. And, and he's got one in the bag. This really is an all-consuming thing. You're constantly on the lookout for game. You're constantly making sure your feet are in a stable position so you don't fall over. More importantly, if there is a shot, that's the thing, that's a definite sort of process in your mind, especially on this uneven ground. And I know from a film perspective, that's the same. And the view just keeps distracting you. Scotland is a stunning place. We gathered halfway up the hill for a catch up before climbing to the top and heading into what would be some serious action.
We'll just have the first shot at a bird behind the line. <sighs> Those little light 28s do feel like a bit of a misfire when they go off, certainly compared to a bit of a lumpy 12 ball. We're gonna head up up there. It sort of opens up as we get on. It's open hill up there. Oh, this is like the stuff dreams are made of. This is why I couldn't have flushed at a worse time. First time I've not been paying attention all damn day. Mishmat the gun. Shot straight over the top of him. My hand was on the trigger, I accidentally pulled the safety off when I sort of <laughs> slumped it into my shoulder after the first shot. The second shot would have been nice and clean. Let's uh, pay attention to what we're doing. The answer is, is just don't need the easy ones. 45 yards curling over the trees, you hit it with the first, hit it with the second, and it came very much like a wounded fighter jet. I'm just a nature addict. I just don't feel as good ever in my life as when I'm, I don't even have to be with a gun, just being outside. And I like urban environments too. I'm a fairly modern guy, but something just special, it's good for the soul. I think we'd all agree it's good for the soul. Better for the soul when you're carrying a gun, am I right? There seems to be no justice in my life. I can kill stuff and then you put like a 10 yard on me and I just can't even kill it. And I don't know what it is. Happened just with a duck, happened just then with a pheasant. Clearly have just like this internal moral thing that says, don't do it, Johnny. It's not like a good look, Johnny. But we walked up, honey. You should shoot them when you have the opportunity. Need to maybe go and practice. This is clearly it's that distance, we can kill it. Let's get on. There's more birds. There you go. After my speech, 15 yard crossing bird. Just remembered. Don't use any sniffs bleed, don't use much power, just shoot it in the face. And so we did. Regulating the speed, actually fitting it into your shoulder, sort of learning how the gun mounts and how to, how to actually get it to the point where you want it to look and how to swing it. I mean, how can you not like that? Just to look at. The profile is beautiful with the solid top rib, that rounded action, that slender grip. The grip is my second favorite part. It's slender, it looks great, but it actually fits the hand of a fully grown adult. And number three, Non-selective safety catch. Selective safeties can get in the bin. They're horrific. Oh, there are certain things about guns that I think just love. Non-selective safety is probably the thing I love most. That, that can just change a gun most. Right, we're moving, let's catch up. Out of the woods and we arrived into some open moorland. I was hit with memories of a conversation with an American friend who told me that there is nothing better than walking in big country with a small gun. As the birds continued to flush, I realized he wasn't wrong. I really like this. A little bit of a refit on the stock. I don't want one of these. It's so hard in the world of sub -gauge. They're all beautiful, they're all small frames. What do you even go for? Every time I take a 28 out, it just feels good. Or maybe some 28 gauge barrels on a 12 ball. Maybe that's the answer, sub I don't know. And I know a lot about guns. If it's 12 balls, I'm so like, clued up on what I want and I own a few so it's easy. 28, committing to that one that is your 28. Oh, I don't know. At this point, I was once again reminded how driven shooting came to be. In the process of hunting these birds, there had been many running or flushing at ranges well in excess of a shotgun's capabilities. A lot of these birds were now sat in a small forestry block and the most logical way to get some in the bag was to drive them out to standing guns. So we walked the bottom along, we then hooked it and we brought everything back and we blanked pretty much everything in into this block in front of some rhododendrons and some fir trees. And now the keeper's gonna sort of tap out, put the dogs in and push it out over the top of us, which is a really logical thing. Otherwise we're gonna push them to the edge of this wood and they're just gonna disappear before we get there. Suddenly, 16 grams of six, and now all of my waxing and my, like lyrical about 28 gauge. We're about to see what it can do. Yes. 
16 goddamn grams. I don't know, I was whinging about when them walked out birds. It's clearly just a talent issue. <laughs> I mean, I'm from the south. When we shoot walked up, it's not like this rough, clearly. This is a whole other thing to learn. I've done it a few times, and every time I say, you need to do that more, but when you can't practice like that uneven stuff, that super thick ground. You just need to come to Scotland more, right, Sash? No? <laughs> this is quite hard to film. Okay, a bit low. That would, uh, that would have been a little low, a little low. And you would have missed it. I would have missed it. I think that's the real truth. Nothing to do with anything other than just like, just how does one shoot a 55 yard pheasant dead with a 28 gauge 16 gram of six? I am clearly a better driven game shot than I am a walked up shot in this kind of environment. I Love this gun. Clearly, like, putting it through the hardest possible shooting on Earth. It's funny, eh? we've done years of driven game shooting, and a few years, a couple of walked up films over the last year. And it's funny that the amount of Americans say, there's always a comment about, um, go and shoot in the grouse woods, see how you get on. And it's because it's hard, like, it's just so consuming. Here, the only thing that matters is the shot, the footwork, and it's definitely an art, this kind of thing. It's a, it, but the shot up there, isn't that complicated? There's so many other external factors. How does one train for that? Maybe like clay shooting whilst people yell abuse at you and you're on a wobble board. <laughs> it's been an up and down journey. Missing the 10 yard birds, that's been a brutal kind of reality. Missing the easy going away bird, that, that's been quite hard. This gun has come into its own. Ah, I missed one. It moves well. The ones I missed, I just tried to just be cheeky, you know, and just stab into a space, and it doesn't really work like that. You have to really start on the tail and bum belly beat bang, really smooth with it, quite controlled. Stick it into a space. It doesn't really have the, I don't have the muscle memory to shoot it like I would a 12 bore in that capacity of just bang. Like I said, it's been a rocky road. We've built, it's been a fun relationship. I've got to learn a lot about this gun. That was a bad shot. I should have just shot that driven, really. I don't know why I turned to shoot it that way. This is very much a bit of me. You know, I like driven shooting. I like walked up shooting. But that mix where you're actually working and working and you get a little... Is it a reward? Definitely a reward. You've pushed all the birds into that wood by the proxy of moving around. And obviously these birds are quite wild. They do not want to be shot. There's not a dopey pheasant that's been out a month. These birds are semi-wild. There's wild ones mixed in there. There's woodcock. There's all sorts of birds here they do walk on ahead of you. They're not waiting for you to stand on their tails. And so you deserve the reward of them sitting up right at the end of the, the cover. I love that. Absolutely love that. Yeah. Have you ever earned a drive before? I feel like we earned that. We earned the hell out of that. <laughs> that was brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, lunch? Um, lunch? And what, and what, yeah, lunch, mate. What a pair of guns, right? Um, I... I I've had a journey with this. So, so, so many stupid misses up at the top there. Because your feet are like up around your ears and you're trying... <laughs> that one to your left. Is... Right, with a 28. I've right, wanted a 28 for ages. I just haven't committed one yet, but... Mate, it was really good. Even I thought it was a great shot and I was still over there. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't sold on a 28 gauge before today, this morning spent with the Phoenix had me fully addicted. Time for lunch where we exchanged stories of the sides of the lines we couldn't see. But we also exchanged guns. Because we all had a crush on what each other was using. After lunch, the keeper offered us the opportunity of another drive. The birds were extremely wild and not playing ball with walked up today. Predictably, none of us refused. We're about to go and shoot a bit of a drive. We're going to knock some bits out to us. Because... I guess whilst you've got a team of people, why not have a couple of people walking, a couple of people standing? I think walked up doesn't necessarily need, need to be walked up, it's just, what's the best way to work this cover? Because some of this cover here is so thick, you just couldn't shoot in it. I think there's a group of us, let's communally hunt some pheasants. I had my 28 gauge taken away from me because I shot it too well on that drive. And I now have to shoot 24 side by side. A gun that I haven't had historically good experiences with. They're lightweight, they're the wrong way round. There's a lot about them that I don't like. However, this one seems to come up well. I feel like I'm being punished. 
and I'm hoping that I like it in the end. They don't want me to find out, right? And here it is, the Viscount 20 ball. It's a side lock, side by side 20 ball, and I have no question that it's a beautiful thing. But I'm just a yob. Well, I hang out with Simon, and Simon's actually a classy gentleman. And I, I, I have tendencies that way. I am a gentleman, I live my life by a fairly strict moral code, but I just like cool stuff. Like, I like fast yobby cars, and I like fast yobby guns, and I don't know whether I'm at a point in my life where I'm happy to like calm down yet. That's the brutal reality. Because I can see the appeal. I'm just not ready for it. So what has happened here? Well, this wood above us that I remember looking at last night whilst we were sat just there shooting ducks. I'd literally just found my feet with that 28 ball and now Leon's got it. What a phenomenal day. I'm absolutely privileged to be invited today. What's really exciting and why I'm buzzing tonight is I'm cooking uh, for the guests, the guns. We are gonna go a little bit fancy. We shot a duck flight on this pond last night. So we're gonna have duck, use both the legs and the breast, so no wastage. Dinner's gonna be banging. Um, so yeah, I'm buzzing about that. Funny thinking back over my shooting career, you call it a career? Well, careers are, I mean, genuinely, I suppose I have had a shooting career. But my sort of journey through game shooting. I get satisfied very easily now. I'm not done now, like today, I will continue to shoot, but if the team said, all right, let's go home, I'll go, all right. I'm as happy as can be, I've shot enough. I like it. I like it, definitely, it's more like there's a lot of things not to love, but you can just go, you, bang. And on birds like this that are just really within killable distance, it feels alive. I like that a lot. Totally different to the over and under 28. It is a more fluid process. But like I said, I don't think I'm that refined yet. What I am is cold. That smugness earlier with all the walking and the sweating and everyone getting over hot heated. I can't feel my hands. <laughs> it's not often I hold preconceptions anymore. And I'm not sure why I had a silly prejudice against a 20 bore side by side. I haven't shot something that sweetly in a while. <laughs> so the keeper offered us the option of another drive or another walk. You probably couldn't tell how hard and far that walk was this morning. We're so close to the bag, them just knocking over a little bit of a little bit of cover towards us is um, what the gang chose. I'd happily go for another walk, to be fair. They've got a 410 here. Well, they had a 20 ball, but they had 410 barrels as a combo set. I love the concept. It's the last drive. There's no pressure. I shot that 20 ball significantly better than I expected to. Who doesn't want to shoot a 410? And honestly, you got an extra two grams in this cartridge than you did in the um, 28 ball, so. Dreaming good. Well, all my dreams are sweet. When I lay me down to sleep, not dreaming good. Welcome to the final drive. 410. We did a video a long time ago on how far is a 410 affected. It was like 35 yards. That's that's a big bird. Most people would say 35 yard is like more 40. So we should be fairly confident. Now I said before, I'm totally ready just to sit down and have great food. I think I'm gonna have to help Leon in the kitchen. I think I'm just gonna get in his way and I'm looking forward to him to getting like a chefy rage. It's gonna be like- um, All right, I'll play a personal game with you. If you could get him to shout at you, I'll give you 10 quid. Done. <laughs> all right, all chefs are Gordon Ramsay in my head. He'd be like, you stupid. <laughs> You're an idiot sandwich. <laughs> all those birds have been hooking out the back and Tom's been sort of walking in with them. There have been some of the best pheasants you'll ever shoot out there. Four tens are even harder to shoot. That's what we've learned. It's the smaller you go, the harder it is. You can tell your mama and your daddy too. Your brother and your sisters and your best friends too. Or at least the more controlled you have to be, which is not something I've been particularly good at. Lay me down to sleep. Not dream of you. 
I am ready to cook and socialize. I don't know if we've ever done like a game shooter game cookery before. This is like next level stuff. So let's ruin it so no chef ever wants to work with us again. <laughs> I'm going to help place. you in the kitchen, yeah? Yeah, uh, I would love it. Absolutely love yeah? it. Yeah? Oh, yeah, I would. Absolutely. Okay. I think everyone will get in there and uh, we'll do a piece and uh, we'll see You'll how you get You'll love it, will you? Yeah, I yeah. will love it. No problems at all. How could you not be satisfied after a day like that? However, cooking and preparing the game after the hunt is really the ultimate icing on the cake. It's a very childish day, mate. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. No, every day should be childish and enjoyable, because otherwise, what's the point? I would like to come back. Can we do it again? You're more than welcome. The fact that you go for the big walk, yeah, and then have a couple of little drives, yeah. It, it, we can tailor it to whatever you want it to be, and, and that's part of the beauty of this estate, is it offers everything from stalking to grouse to driven pheasants, mini driven walks up days, or you can just do a walks up day. Um, and we can benefit from, as you've seen today, some spectacular pheasants that are very affordable. 28s, 410s, 16s, just, just a fantastic day, and actually goes to show they're all incredibly capable. I fell in love with that 28 man. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I think that's going to come south with you. Should we go and uh, cook? Let's go and see what Leon's preparing in the kitchen. I've got to help him. Some stuff. Well, Leon's come here to learn a little bit about chefing. Uh, and you're chefing. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> Get that You're side. doing it wrong. <laughs> no, you're doing it wrong. What are you? <laughs> An idiot sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> This food was amazing, perhaps unsurprisingly. Pan fried skin side down releases a lot of the fat within the skin. Okay. Um, make it crispy. Make it a bit crispy, a little bit of time, butter, a base, 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 into the tray, let it rest. You don't need to be rare, rare is a bit too much. Okay. Pink is where that needs to be. So that's where the legs are, it's inside there. Red cabbage, red wine, sugar, molasses. It's currently, right now, all those duck breasts that we've just cooked are still cooking. Resting meat is important. Amazing. Hugely important. Yeah. This community was amazing, perhaps unsurprisingly. And this trip was unforgettable, perhaps unsurprisingly. This trip embodies everything I love about shooting. Hard work, sporting birds, Top company, fine guns, and just enough silliness to glue it all together. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> that was actually... My thanks to Tom and William Powell for making this whole thing possible. And I'm sure you'll see us up here in the future. Guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.